think of all the history of all the people that have come through here. The Old Idaho Penitentiary was open between 1872 and 1973. When people come here, they get that heavy feeling, that sense that sometimes they're being watched, sometimes that they just sense sadness. And of course, we're bringing those stories to light all of the time through the history that we tell. Last time I was here, I believe I saw your shadow. Can you show me again? But we also encourage people, come on down, share your stories of paranormal experiences with us because there was violence, there was death and destruction. I'm looking for Raymond. Is Raymond here? Heard you committed a really nasty crime. Want to tell us about it? There were around 130 deaths that occurred here at the site. Everything from the 10 folks who were executed to murder, suicides, diseases, natural deaths. You see the remnants of the past. You see these buildings that were burned down and destroyed. No, we didn't let them go as the historical society. We kept them in the context of, of what happened here. And so that's why we're not going to rebuild these buildings because they tell a story. And we're going to continue that story and we're going to create the historical context so you don't just see ruins, you hear and understand the story behind it. You guys know who Jack the Ripper is, right? Yeah. yeah. Those old tiny crime scene photos and how gruesome they were. That's about similar to what uh, Mr. Raymond Snowden did to Cora Dean um, the night that he stabbed her 29 times, also severed her spinal cord and cut pieces of her skin off of her, uh, completely mutilated her body was found the next morning by a 13-year-old boy. After he had committed a crime and he was brought here serving his 13 months before his execution, uh, the day of, the chaplain came in and asked, you know, do you think anybody could forgive you for your crime? And he said, I don't expect anybody to. He was like, what about God? You know, do you expect God to forgive you? And he said, not even God could forgive me for what I've done. We absolutely have an acknowledgement that, you know, ghost hunters are, are sort of drawn to this place being this kind of abandoned old prison. And so we want them to come. We want them to come. We just hope that they're open to the history part of it and not just the paranormal part of it. Because again, like I said, I think if you don't have both of those together, you won't have the complete story. Did somebody say something? Was that you whispering? Visitors are interested in potential paranormal activity or are trying to understand their own experiences. They're looking at, for reasons as to why they might have had that experience. And what we can do is we can try to inform them of something that may have occurred here in the past, a story that we know is factual from when the prison was open. Many guests come here asking, you know, what other experiences folks have had? And they also uh, tell us what experiences they've had themselves. Can I come in your cell? Is that okay? Investigating Siberia with my team, I was standing in front of one of the solitary cells and when I had used my flashlight to look into the cell, there was a mass that was darker than dark. It was just something sitting here crouched down like that and it stayed for a couple seconds and then it started off. And that's not possible because there's a wall there. You know, if we do have ghosts, they're very elusive as far as being captured on video or camera, but the experiences are something that I can't deny. People come to me and I know in their eyes, listening to their voice, that something happened to them. Whether it's an aberration or whether it's a, a light flickering or something that we go back later on, the light's just fine. We can't quite explain those things. We all have our different reasonings and chalk it up to things. I've worked here for so long, I don't want to believe in the paranormal because I'd be scared to come to work every day. But there's things I can't explain. But I like to think those ghosts or those spirits appreciate that we're trying to tell their story and trying to tell their perspective, good, bad, or otherwise. Last time I was in here, the last two times I was in here, we heard you talking to us. You had said on one occasion that you wanted me to let you out, that I should let you out. And then last time I was here, I asked who wanted to be let out, and you said me. Can you tell me your name? Is there somebody in the building with us? The interesting thing, the, the hardest thing for most people to understand and when they do parallel investigation is mainly a one-sided conversation. A lot of times I say, you know, if you want to ask a question, and you just feel awkward just talking to avoid, you know, nothing. You can always look at me and ask the question. I just won't answer you. Was that you moving upstairs? Those events that we have, all that money goes 
back to the Historical Society to preserve the site, to preserve our education programs. And we're lucky enough and fortunate enough, we use Big River Paranormal. 100% of those proceeds come right back to us. So they don't take any cut from that. Hello? When people come and do those things, they are supporting the site. And we really appreciate that. And of course, we're a really large site, it's four acres, so people can socially distance and come here safely. We do have some regulations, so you wanna make sure you check out our website to know all the safety guidelines, but come on down, we got space. Do you like staying here? It's fun to take people out on investigations because you get to watch them experience things that they've never experienced before, especially when we do have something paranormal happen. I think I saw you when, I, when we were coming into the building. It was a shadow, it was something walking out, so I thought it was somebody walking by. And that's why I had the employee walk out and around the building to see if it was casting a shadow here and it didn't. It's a reflective space. And so for some people that are super sensitive maybe to those, uh, those spirits and those feelings, um, it can be a little scary. But again, once we put it in historical context, I think that sort of helps people maybe become a conduit or maybe become something where they can further that story so that spirit or somebody something that's dissettled can be at ease because it, it, once there's understanding maybe they can let go of those things.